Enjoy with your headphones for a better listening experience. Please watch till the end of the video to have the most scariest part of the story. What is your paranormal experience? I wouldn't say my experience was paranormal, but rather supernatural. Four years ago, my parents, grandmother and I visited a very prominent temple in northeastern India. The deity, a goddess, is highly revered and has great historical significance too. My parents and grandmother are deeply religious, I on the other hand am spiritual but not deeply religious. To add to it, I was going through a very rough phase in life emotionally, and wasn't too enthusiastic on participating in anything per se. When we entered the temple premises, there was an unbelievably long queue to enter the inner sanctum slash altar of the temple. It would have easily taken about two hours for us to get to the front of the queue. I am not deeply religious and disinterested, refused to wait in the queue and told my parents that they should go ahead while I sat on the side and waited for them to return. Although my parents, who are deeply religious, were really looking forward to it, they chose not to leave me alone and they decided to just pray from outside the temple together and leave. So, we walked to the front of the temple facing the entrance to the inner sanctum and stood with folded hands, praying amongst hundreds, literally, of other devotees who were also praying there beside us outside the entrance of the inner sanctum. In that moment of prayer, I truly prayed with all my heart since I was going through emotional turmoil. I wasn't asking for anything. But rather meditating with folded hands and feeling thankful for everything I have. When we were nearly done praying, a police officer, since it's a very prominent temple, the security is handled by the police themselves, walked up to my parents, grandmother and I and said, follow me. We had no clue who this police officer was, we had never seen him before since we had traveled there from another part of the country, we didn't know why he was asking us to follow him, and we didn't know why he came up to us specifically amongst the hundreds of other devotees there. So, we followed him, he took us to the side of the temple, opened up a barricade and proceeded to walk us straight into the inner sanctum right in front of the deity, all while a super massive queue waited on the other side for this opportunity. We couldn't believe it. We were standing right in front of the deity. We prayed, received the flowers and prasadam, religious offering, from the priest of the inner sanctum and came out. This whole thing must have taken five minutes at most. Once we were out, we wanted to thank the cop for taking us there, so we looked for him, but we couldn't find him anywhere in the temple premises. We walked up to the other cops and asked for him, even described his appearance, but they said there wasn't anybody there matching the description. After the trip we traveled back home and within a week's time, multiple things in my life both academically and emotionally which were causing me great torment over the past couple of years, all changed for the best. The whole experience was something out of this world. It almost felt like the deity herself sent somebody to bring us close to her and hear all our prayers even if we didn't spell it out for her. That's an incident that will stay with me forever. Few years back, we were doing check-in of our luggage for our return international flight back home from India. We finished the security check as well and we were in the waiting lounge. Our child was around one year old. All of a sudden she started crying. The intensity of her crying had increased manifold and we for some reason could not stop her. We tried all the usual tricks of trying to make her sleep, giving her some milk. All of them failed. My wife started panicking. She told me that she is scared to take the flight. She cannot manage the situation. We decided to head back home and rebook the tickets. This could mean we lose thousands of rupees. But it appears like we do not have much choice. We spoke with customs and airport security about our situation. They did some paperwork, released our checked-in luggage, and let us leave. The moment we left the airport, and we came to the car park area, our child stopped crying. This totally surprised us. We called my parents to tell them about what happened. We were shocked to know my grandfather passed away. While going for tuition back when I was in plus two, I usually crossed a railway track picking up my cycle. On this rainy day I was wearing a raincoat, so my peripheral vision was blocked. 
I had to cross two tracks to get to the other side. A train was passing through the track at the opposite end. I have decided it's best I wait I on the first track while the train is passing on the other track. The thing is, there was a train already stationary on the far end on the track I was waiting on. Since my peripheral vision was blocked by the raincoat and the raindrops falling on the raincoat cancelled any surrounding noise, I was not aware of anything happening around me. Suddenly I could hear a voice coming from inside my head which was practically yelling to look to the left. I looked and the train which was stationary was reversing towards me, there was only a few meters between us. I immediately picked my cycle and moved from the track while being in shock trying to cope up with what had transpired. I looked around to see if someone actually called me, only I was there. I could have been dead. To this day I believe it's a divine intervention. I was in school, think around 7th grade and I had relatives in Mumbai whom I used to visit in the summer holidays. During the holidays, our usual plan would involve visiting some places in and around Mumbai with my first cousin's sister and a gang of other cousins from my aunt's side. So, the summer holidays were upcoming in a couple of months, and I was living in Delhi at that time. And I used to have a lot of dreams, some of which I could remember. Those days I was extremely interested in noting down my dreams and thinking out aloud to myself what I dreamt about when I used to wake up, think I was researching Silva mind control method, some obscure 90s thing. So, I remember I had two distinct dreams about some place where I was with my family. That place had red gravel roads everywhere. The first dream was about me standing in a backyard of sorts with mangroves and other fruit trees and laughing and walking around. This was a hazy one. The second dream, which was super lucid, was me having a stroll with my family and my sister on a red gravel road. There were leather shoe shops on the side of the road, and I had a leather stick whip in my hand, the kind you use on horses. I was holding her hand and walking. At a distance I saw these small young trees planted on the right side of the road having these green metal mesh enclosures. As I walked forward I reached that tree and I suddenly tripped over a rock and fell and just like inception, my dream breaks from that fall. I woke up. I remembered this dream but as two months went by, it dissolved from my mind, after all what would I do with it? Cut to the summer holidays, I reached Mumbai, and we made a plan to visit this hill station called Matherin where I had never in my life been before, leave alone hearing any details about it. My family booked their favorite bungalow there and off we went. It was a remarkably interesting old colonial bungalow surrounded by mangroves and lush green trees with a huge backyard. I think on the second day of the holiday, I was roaming around in space when I remembered my first dream, it was exactly the same backyard. I had goosebumps. But I soon dismissed it as deja vu and didn't think much of it. On another day, my family decided to take an evening walk. Matherin has a lot of horses apparently and I bought a cowboy hat of sorts with a whip. I started walking holding my sister's hand. As I took a turn towards the main market, my eyes went down on the road, and I realized the road was red gravel. A chill went down my spine. Before that I had plenty of deja vus but never had I remembered a dream while it was being recreated right in front of my eyes. I lifted my eyes up as I walked, I saw there were leather shoe shops. And a young tree in the distance. I remembered all of my dreams instantly at that moment. My feet were on autopilot of sorts just walking forward, my mind was trying to grapple with this realization. I saw the tree had a green metal mesh around it. As I approached it, I really wanted to stop and halt but it felt too late to do anything about it. I knew I would fall if I walked further. One step. Two step. My mind is screaming, watch out. I came just a couple of steps away from the tree, I turned and saw my sister's face, I turned back towards the road. And I fall. Right down on my knees scraping it. There are deja vus, a sort of error in read slash write memory thread in our heads. But having two dreams in a row about the same place which I have never ever seen or heard about and this happening? Well, 
It always makes me think to this day about the nature of things. So, this one is not there anymore but before there were six lane expressways, there were normal highways and there is a curve 20 25 kilometers from my place where my father always kept his foot off the accelerator. He is a police officer, and he was in charge of the police station of that area for three years. He says during his time, he has seen at least 20 25 accidents in that very curve, it was just a small bend. As per the locals, there is a Cali Mander right on the curve and every night, at a certain time, a shadow crosses the road, and all the drivers think that there is someone, so they try to evade and crash. Even those who have managed to evade the shadow have said multiple times that they have seen it. Now, according to the villagers, sometimes, they see a cat pass, sometimes a small girl or sometimes a jackal. No one has ever seen what happened to those that cross the road after crossing. The place is extremely prone to accidents and even now there is a signboard of accident-prone zones, but these are all here and speak. Though I respect my father and do not touch the accelerator at that curve. This happened a long time ago, about a decade I guess. I was chilling with a cousin of mine, smoking, and just exchanging stories because it had been a while since I had met him. It was in the middle of the night and the lights were out. There was some light coming in through the windows so there was no problem in seeing things. I was holding a small bag in my hand, just letting it dangle there, and something pulled at it, like it got dragged in the air slowly along with my hand tugging behind. I didn't pay much attention at first because I guess the movement was too slight at first. And then my whole arm gets yanked strongly into the air. I screamed, honestly I was terrified. At this my cousin gets up quickly and switches on the light. And get this, he is smiling, and he doesn't ask me what happened, or anything of that sort, he asks me, did you feel something? It was so strange, like this was an expected occurrence for him. He then goes on to tell me that there's something in that room. It had begun when he had started chilling in that room about a few years ago, while just smoking and watching TV and stuff in the night, like someone having a few quiet hours for themselves. He had started feeling such a presence and was fearful at first, and then he thought to himself what is the absolute worst that could happen, and with that thought he overcame his fear and he let it be. He said that he is now quite aware of the presence and has kind of bonded with it. It doesn't like it when he indulges in any sort of substance usage slash intoxication etc., and often shows some hostility when he does. One more thing that he said was that in some moments it passes through him at times. For me to have encountered such an incident and the kind of matter-of-fact explanation that followed, it was a bit overwhelming. I am really unsure about what to make of all of this. I come from a long line of schizophrenic people, my grandpa, his father and his sister as well, my dad shows some symptoms of schizophrenia and I'm 99% sure that I have it since I see things and hear voices, it's hard to explain but I see human-shaped figures in the dark and when I try to change my point of view by moving or shifting my eyes a little bit, they gradually fade into the environment. It isn't scary at all, and I can easily tell that it isn't real. So, here's how my story goes. I had a midnight craving so I decided to go downstairs and see what's in the fridge. As I was descending the staircase I heard the alarm clock going off in my grandma's room, my grandparents live in separate rooms during the day since they can watch different shows on the TV and use the bathroom without waiting for the other person to finish. They sleep together in the room upstairs on the other side of the house. I figured I'd turn it off and proceed into grandma's room. It was one of those made in China digital clocks that looked really retrofuturistic but was made of cheap plastic. I couldn't find the alarm off button, so I took out the battery. Locked grandma's room and proceeded to turn off the living room's light. Before my hand could reach the switchboard, I felt this sudden chill throughout my body. Even though this happened in summer, all of a sudden it was so cold that I was shivering. I ignored the temperature and turned off the lights. As I passed Granny's room's door, I heard the door getting unlocked. I immediately took two steps back only to find the door completely open. Even though I couldn't see anything, 
I felt like something was in there. I stared at the darkness and the darkness stared back at me. I felt something but my brain wasn't able to completely process it. After about five minutes of awkward staring between me and the invisible entity, it ran out of patience. I saw the door move on its own towards the closing position with my own eyes. Confused me a bit but I was still staring. About a moment later the handle moved down, the door moved to the docking position and the handle went back to its resting position. I don't know why but I said, okay, aloud and casually started moving towards the stairs as if nothing happened. Keep in mind that I was still shivering from the cold and was terrified from the inside. I barely took four to five steps before hearing the alarm clock go off again but at a louder volume. At this point I said, hate it, and made a run for it. Climbed the stairs, ran straight into my parents' room. Thankfully, they were awake and watching a movie. Told them what happened, my dad believed me, mom wasn't convinced so he decided to go downstairs and did a U-turn at the stairs after hearing the alarm clock. Convinced them to let me sleep in their room for the night. Watched a movie with them, one night in Miami, I think, and fell asleep. My mom found no batteries in the alarm clock in the morning. Oh, forgot to mention that three family members, grandpa, grandmother and grandpa's sister, passed away one to three months before the incident. Nothing paranormal but this was weird. I was about 17 and I was in high school. I was studying in special classes and my parents weren't home when I got back around 5 p.m. My mom had left a note between the grill and door. I went to pick it up, but I distinctly remember feeling very weird about picking up the paper. I remember seeing my vision zoned in a little and become hyper-focused. Just as I was picking up, a viper was hiding there and moved out from under that paper. I freaked out and climbed up the outer wall and screamed like a little girl. Could be a coincidence though. But I still remember the feeling. Many years later I got into an accident, and I had a similar feeling of time slowing down and I could see the car coming at me slowly, but I still froze. I believe our brains have the ability to observe and make flight or fight responses that are autonomous, and we may have to learn to trust it. I went. My mom actually recounted this story to me. Growing up I always had a fear of ghosts and would need to be reassured every night that ghosts didn't exist, according to my grandparents. My mom and I moved to our hometown in Goa when I was seven and one night I pushed my mom to watch some stupid Hindi films. This was the monsoon season, and they would often close off the route from Mapusa to Panjima due to landslides. So, while returning after watching the film, probably around 11.30 to 12 a.m., the traffic police officers diverted us towards a longer, shadier, and less well-lit route that would bypass the hill. Now my mom is a pretty bold woman and doesn't usually believe in the paranormal, but she had heard that there was a haunted banyan tree on this route. The ghost who lived in it had a propensity for messing with vehicles. Back then, my mom had a second-hand kinetic flute that was slow. As we were going up the hill in the pouring rain, we passed by the tree. The scooter suddenly stopped working. My mom started panicking and the scooter turned back on and started moving up the hill pretty fast on its own. My mom had not even pressed the accelerator. After a minute or so, my mom regained control of the scooter and we managed to reach home. I got the most severe beating of my life that day and I never really understood why. It was only this year that my mom revealed to me what had happened. My mom believes that the ghost took pity on us and actually tried to help us get out of the situation we were stuck in. So, if they do exist, I believe that not all of them are malicious. I was born and raised in Dubai. Since most of you are familiar with the country, there's this city called Ras Al Khaimah, R.A.K. In this city there's a spooky abandoned village, like a complete tiny village, which has empty houses with that looks like it was abandoned in a rush. Some still have turned over tables. None of these houses have any doors or windows, so they're structures which you can look inside and even the insides have been swallowed by the desert. This happened at least 10 years ago. 
This RAK abandoned village is kind of famous now, lot of people visit it just for horror. But, back then, nobody really knew about this place, we came to know about it because of our local friends. So, one night, twelve of us in three cars decided to go check this out. Of course, we decided to do it at night, and we reached this place around 2 a.m. At one point, we decided to stop and go out for a smoke. So, while smoking, one of us finds an app, called Ghost Hunter. It's a legit iPhone app. The atmosphere is creepy enough, but honestly, it's just an empty desert space with structures. So, one of us downloads that app, and starts checking it out. So, the app has this big radar screen, like you see in movies that ships use, when there's a missile attack. So, a big radar screen with the line moving in circle as if it's searching. So, if it finds a ghost, it will come up as a red dot. So, while using this app, it showed a red dot in one corner of the screen. Just for jokes, we decided to check out the area where the red dot was and we were just fooling around, going towards the red dot. Mind you, it's around 2 a.m., our car is behind a few houses now and earlier, we had our cars for light, but now, it's just camera torches and it's pitch black. Very faint moonlight. So, while walking towards this red dot, we realize that the structure we are walking towards, is a mosque. I'm not going to lie, this freaked out of us. Like genuine shivers down the spine. As always, every group has the man with the big dick, with something to prove and ours did too. So, three of us decides to walk into the mosque, I didn't, I stayed back with the others and lit a few cigs. So, we can see these guys walking towards the mosque and after like 100 meters all we can see is their phone torches moving towards the mosque. And like 2 to 3 minutes later, they were in, so no light. Literally, after like less than 5 minutes, we see the phone torch light moving at us frantically, and it looks as if someone's running with the phone light in hand, it's Jay, Jay's like 5 feet 8 inches and 100 kilograms, but that time, he was bolting, I have known this guy my whole life, I never saw him move that fast, ever. So, he completely runs past us doesn't even stop for a second and all of us are thinking, he's just foo hashtag asterisk king with us. And we see the other two guys coming after him as well. We ask them what happened, and they said, we have no clue, but he just screamed and ran out of there. We must have been scared. Let's go find him. We went towards the car and realized that Jay's left with the car. This freaked us out and more than freaked. Like, why is this guy taking it this far? Everyone crammed into the two cars and like three to four kilometers down the road, he's pulled to the side of the road and his driver side door is open, and he's sitting with his legs outside the car. We got up to him and realized that he had vomited as well and was completely soaked in sweat. We asked him what happened, and he said he feels really sick, like high fever and shivering. We asked him what happened, and he told us, when he was inside the mosque, they walked in a lit bit and then he started hearing a voice in his head, whispering first, kill them, kill them, kill them all, kill them. It started slowly at first and then started screaming in his head kill them, kill them all, kill them. And that's when he ran. My poor dad lived in a really poor quality hostel where the young boys were massively scared about a purported witch entering the dormitory corridor at night. After a few weeks, the boys decided to band together to fight the witch. They all stayed up for the whole night and used taps on walls to communicate. The plan was to run outside all at once and confront her. That night, they heard the footsteps, really, really soft, after a bit, they decided to all run out except only a few did while the rest all stayed back. The witch, whose steps they all had clearly heard was nowhere to be seen. All the boys in the corridor were petrified. One boy was autistic in the group who got so scared and panicked he decided to run out from the corridor onto the street, he was scared. A few other kids chased after him until they all heard a massive scream outside. The boy had fainted, and the other boys all said that they saw a witch in a white sari. 
They had never heard a scream like that in their whole lives. The next day, news came out that an old woman who was urinating in the gutter across the street had called the police after being attacked by a cat that the hostel boys were chasing out. Not a ghost story but a ghost buster one. So, when I got promoted to class 12 my parents adjusted and made a room available for me, till this time I used to sleep with my brother and parents in the same room, I see. So, on the first night after studying till 1, I just couldn't sleep. There was just something that kept me awake, soon this feeling turned into sightings to hearing noises and continued for about a month. As I was a stupid teen I never told my parents about all this as I would appear weak, but one month of sleepless nights had started to take a toll on me. So, there's an uncle who lived downstairs who had just moved in and asked why I was looking so pale, I just stared and couldn't speak. He just said whatever is happening don't fret over it, embrace it, and went inside his home. This line stuck in my head and as soon as I went to sleep and things started happening I calmly closed my eyes and said the ghost or whatever has 10 seconds to pat me on my shoulder or else it's not real, after this I counted till 15 and opened my eyes on 20. For real from that day to today I didn't get a pat but got a lot of sleep. And also, that uncle is a drunkard so you never know from where wisdom may be imparted upon your shoulder. I was 15 years old when my mother and my mother's elder sister passed away in a sudden car accident. The vehicle also had my younger brother and cousins who all escaped with moderate injuries. When a person you love the most passes away suddenly, it's pretty devastating. Coming to the paranormal story. I remember it was the third day after the accident and the house was full of relatives. It was noon and I was sleeping in my grandmother's room with grandma in another bed. I was asleep and suddenly I could feel somebody sitting close to me in bed. I thought there were some relatives who came to offer condolences, so I opened my eyes. I saw my mother sitting next to me and my mother's sister standing next to me. Well, my brain automatically switched off and I started screaming. My grandma suddenly started shushing me and kept repeating, don't scream, they will go. My relatives ran into my room and here I am a 15-year-old boy bawling. I told the story to my relatives, and they said maybe my mother had come to say her goodbyes. I don't know whether I was hallucinating, or they were actually there as my grandmother should also be hallucinating along with me right. But the biggest thing is I don't know why I cried that day as soon as I saw them. This is back in October 2019. It's College Fest Eve. Me and my friend are exiting the main campus through the front exit at 6-ish p.m. There's a reception room, the north side of it faces the outside road, east and south side faces passage inside and west side shares with another room. Like the passage to outside forms an L with the room. As we are walking towards the south side of the reception room, we see the door facing us is being jerked as if someone in the room is making sure it's properly locked. Now we turn and walk along the east side, reception room made of glass this side, and see no one inside it, trust me I'm having shivers as I'm writing. At first I was a bit investigative and laughed it off with my friend. The only window at the north side was permanently closed and there was no breeze, so wind was ruled out. Immediately flashed inside with phone to check if it was some rat slash cat. The room was pretty clean, and all nooks and corners were clearly visible, nothing found. I recreate the door jerking myself and it took quite the effort, clearly not possible be some small animal. Then, I at the top of the adjacent room, receptions west, I saw a sign saying, Kaling Memorial Hall. Kaling is an Aranakala name. I showed this to a friend, and both had shivers and ran off. The whole thing there later, maybe two to three minutes but it will never leave my mind. To this day I can't understand what could have moved the door with such force. Experienced a week ago, I felt someone sat behind me and I could feel its pressure on my back. I woke up. Now I have experienced numerous sleep paralysis events and whenever it occurs I know exactly what's happening. Not this time though. I was completely awake, and I even saw the lights put on across my window, I was wide awake. 
I even thought that this is one of those sleep paralysis. What I basically experienced is my blanket being pulled off from side. The part which was covering my back and that immediately woke me up. And then I felt like someone sat behind me. I felt the mattress being compressed. At this point, there were two events which I confirmed that are happening and I am wide awake. Third I understood something clearly at last being turned one across my window to which I was facing while I was lying down. I grabbed my phone and turned on those Wi-Fi Philips lights. Means I entered the lock code, opened the app, and turned it on. And then I turned, there was nothing. That is the event I calmly believe is the most evident paranormal experience I've had. My grandfather was a religious person, used to wake up at 5 a.m., take bath, and read religious paths on the terrace e every single day. On the day he passed away, he was reading those paths, and my aunt remembers seeing a light, imagine a lit up dia, leaving the room and rising up into the sky. I've heard something similar from my grandmother too. The second incident occurred in the early 90s, when my mom was doing her residency, she's a surgeon. She used to come home tired, late at night at around September 30th 10. For one winter night, she recalls seeing something riding a bicycle, wasn't a human, and disappearing into thin air. I believe it was because she was tired, but nevertheless felt spooky when I heard it for the first time. This is not a paranormal experience but it's still a creepy incident and has a significant impact on me so I think I should share. So, the house I used to live in was a kind of detached house. But although it was an open place it was still not possible to break in and even if someone climbed over the walls. The above door was always locked. However, one incident happened that I will never forget. Being tired my father just put a chain on the door and went to sleep without knowing of an uninvited guest invasion. That night a weird sound began to be heard in our house and my mother who is a soft sleeper opened her eyes to the sound and when she investigated ere the sound is coming from what she saw was a figure trying to cut the door chain with a small fret saw in front of the door. The scariest part was she could see a little bit of his face. Of course, at that moment she screamed loudly waking up everyone in the house and my dad and my older brother run from the back door with baseball bats to chase that man down. Unfortunately, there was nobody there by the time they arrived. This incident still sends a shiver down my spine whenever I think about it. I still wonder what would have happened if that man had successfully cut down the chain. Maybe I wouldn't be alive to tell you this story. This happened to me when I was living in railways quarters, it was a huge house there was only one house next to my house of comparable size but it was empty. So, in our house there was this big hall, other than the living room, where the doors of all the rooms opened. The toilet used to be far away in the corner of big backyard. My parents, my brother and I used to sleep in separate rooms. At that time, I was preparing for JEE and used to study at late night hours sometimes 3 AM. I used to dread a lot whenever I had to pee, there was a big mango tree in the backyard of house next to ours, I always used to feel like someone was looking at me through this tree, and that someone was following while I ran through the backyard to home. So once after one such night after attending nature's call I went to sleep, there was a window in my room with translucent glass, which opened in the hall I talked about. That night I had not closed the curtains, I swear saw some figure walking around, or the silhouette of it on the glass, first I thought it must have been my brother going to toilet, but same thing for three times in a matter of seconds, I screamed for my mom and dad, they and my brother came running. I slept with my lights on the whole night. A year later when we moved to our own house my father told us about a suicide that happened on that mango tree twenty years ago, he never told us there for our own sake. That house is now a hospital. The night was serene and calm, and sleep engulfed and embraced me, like a mother caressing her child. I have been sleeping like a cherub, careless and nonchalant and didn't want to get disturbed by anything. I am a very careless sleeper, sleep is more profound and would not wake up by any noise also. So, I was sleeping on my right side, my right hand under the body. 
Winters in northern India are harsh, you have to cover in many layers to able to keep yourself warm. So, I was totally wrapped in a fat blanket. All of a sudden, as I turned in my sleep, I woke up precipitously. I had touched someone else's hand. Just checked if somebody was in the blanket but no one was there. So, after sweating profusely, got to know the reason. As I slept and my right hand was under the body, it became numb with the passing time as the blood flow was affected. I could not feel anything in my right hand as it was numb so in sleep got to touch it with the other hand. As it was devoid of any sense and sensation due to numbness, I thought it to be someone else's hand. That flabbergasted and paralyzed me in fear. But when it dawned on me, I felt myself to be a nincompoop to have missed this point. By the way I don't believe in paranormal and want you people not to believe in this either. There is an explanation for everything. This happened many years ago. I think I was 7 to 8 at the time or around that age. It was pretty dark outside probably 10 pm or something, my mother opened the balcony door to put clothes on the rope to dry them. I walked on the balcony and for some reason my mother closed the door. I think she didn't notice me. Now on my balcony there are stairs to the terrace and there is a little, long passageway that leads to the stairs. I saw a fat tall figure with flat red eyes. It was coming from the passage, and it was getting closer shouting with a weird scream. At this point I was screaming and banging my hands and head on the door crying for help to open the door. The figure was pretty close to me when. The door opens. I ran inside to find my siblings talking and laughing about something. I ran inside to my mother. That was also the first time I saw a skull through my bedroom window. I have no idea WTF it was. To this day about 7 to 8 years later I'm still a bit scared to go the balcony at night. I don't know if this was a paranormal experience or a prank. So, my family was out, and I was alone, so my friend came to live with me. We watched TV until 11 pm and just had gone to bed when suddenly her phone started ringing and it was from her home. She answered and nobody responded and hung up in like 10 seconds. She called back but no one answered, she called like 10 times still no one answered. Then again she called and finally her mom answered, and she asked if everything was okay. My friend asked why they were calling her, she said they never did, the phone was downstairs, and they all were sleeping on the roof. She, her mom, just came downstairs cause the phone was ringing. We both got super scared. She has three siblings so later I thought they might have pranked her, she did ask them, but they were pretty convincing that it wasn't them. I still don't know what exactly happened. I don't think about it much now but at that time I was pretty scared. This happened when I was about 10 to 11 years old. One uncle in my building had passed away by accident and it was inconclusive if it really was an accident or a planned murder. He was a police officer handling high profile case. After his death, his family moved out of the government allotted flat in police quarters. One evening I was going down the stairs and I reached that uncle's floor. The passage light started flickering. Now this is very normal back in those days so that didn't scare me. When I came down the stairs which ended right next to uncle's house, I could see the door did not have a lock and it suddenly started to open and it was completely dark inside. The flickering passage light lit up a chair inside the room where he used to sit. That scared me and I just ran down. I told my parents about this, and they came with me upstairs and we saw the door was still locked. My mom called the auntie who stayed there, and she confirmed they had not come to visit that place. My parents told me it might have been an illusion, but I was very sure the door was unlocked. I was around 8 I guess so this was late 90s. I was traveling to Raichur Karnataka with a fairly large contingent of extended family. We got to a relative's house which was more like a castle. There were about 20 people, and we were another 14 to 15 and you could still get lost in the house. 
Anyways we reached it after sundown and after sitting for a bit decided everyone was tired and should hit the bed. One of my aunts decided she has to shower. Now this was an old house which meant no attached bathrooms. Toilets and bathrooms were detached and away from the main house. She went, showered, and went to the terrace to dry her hair, came back, and slept. I don't remember the time of the night, but we were woken up with a lot of commotion, I remember my mom's face, she was ghostly white and was forcing us to go back to sleep. But we could hear a lot of screams and crying. Anyways we weasel out bed and check out the commotion. The aunt was wrapped in a shawl, bawling her eyes out while her husband and others were consoling her. A few minutes later a Malvi arrived and things calmed down and we slept. No one told us anything for years until the aunt passed away a few years ago and this topic came up again. So, this is what happened. After the aunt went to bed. She woke up a while later. She felt pressure on her chest and slight difficulty breathing. She tried getting up and having some water but apparently she was unable to move. Tried again but can't move an inch. The pressure was increasing, and she started choking. She tried waking her husband up, but she said her limbs were paralyzed and she could feel two hands on her neck and what felt like someone sitting on her chest squeezing the life out of her. She struggled for a while and was about to give up when all of a sudden it all went away. After a few seconds she screamed, which almost killed her husband out of fear and woke a few elders. When I heard this story I felt it was sleeping paralysis but the elders who rushed into the room that night say there were handprints on her neck that went all the way around her neck. Muslims strongly believe that women should not have their hair open at night specially under the night sky. I'm still skeptical, but the people who were there swore that it was some paranormal entity. Alright I'm sure no one is going to believe me on this one, but I promise you this happened and it still creeps me out when I think about it. It was around 2012 I was really young, maybe like 11 years old. I used to sleep with my mom back then, and my dad was never around so just me and her. That particular night me and my mom felt really uneasy, and both our bodies were in pain. I can't tell you why we felt that uneasiness, but it was just scary for no reason. We both couldn't sleep, and I started crying cause the uneasiness kept increasing. I never believed in God and prayers, but mom did and she started praying and I held her hand tight and just started praying myself, basically just asking God to please help us, after like 5 minutes we both just kind of faded, I particularly saw nothing but white and it all of a sudden just felt normal. Don't know my mom sighed. We talked about it after a few years, and she told me she felt the same thing. My mom used to take me to the rooftop and just let me play around when I was just a kid. One of those days while playing I turned around when the sky got darker and saw mom wasn't there, I panicked and shouted, but no voice was coming out of my mouth. It was a surreal struggle, my body moved on basic survival instinct, I didn't even walk, just crawled on the floor to the staircase. Just before I stepped down I heard feather sounds and my body went light, I don't even know why I turned around but I did, and that scene haunts me even to this day. I'd rather not describe it, so anyways I didn't scream or react when I saw it, just observed it moving around the rooftop, I don't how long after, but I just crawled down the stairs and went to the living room. I find my mom and dad watching TV, then everything after that is blank. The more I think of it the more I feel it was a dream, several years after that incident I spoke about it to my mom, and she said she never left me alone on the rooftop. But here's the catch, I genuinely remember another incident where she forgot I was on the roof, daytime and it was just couple minutes, way after the first incident. So, it if she lied or just never knew. One side how can she not remember me coming down on my own from the roof that too late at night it is practically impossible. On the other side it felt f asterisk asterisk king real, I still remember the gravels on the stairs and the feather sounds, having been with birds now, it frightens me more how accurate it was, I just can't seem to brush it off as a nightmare. Different incident but it made this a bit more sensible to me. In one of the trips we had, 
we went to this temple that was quite notorious for being visited to fight of black magic. We just happened to cross by and mom being an ideal Indian mom wanted to visit. So, we did, and we had this reading done and they said we had an evil spirit lingering in the form of a bird, and it's causing all this bad luck etc. The later part one didn't heed but the bird part made me remember what I had forgotten ages ago. I kept quiet at that point, saying it out just meant more days of running around, holy cleansing, everywhere xd. This coming from me won't sound really thrilling or believable because I was not directly impacted in these stories. But these two stories that I have actually convinced me that there is something that is still unknown to us. I am an atheist, but remembering these conversations never fails to give me chills. Even now as I am typing, I am getting goosebumps. Story 1 When I was a kid, must be like 10 to 12 or something, I had this guy, P, in my neighborhood, for years older than me. We used to play together. And he would tell us these stories about how he used to see fire in certain areas of his house. And the visuals stopped when his grandfather got some holy rituals done in the house. But back then I never believed him. A few years later, we are all grown up and adults. And P's mom accidentally caught fire in the kitchen. P's elder brother tried to save her, but got his hands burned in the process. No one knows how it happened. And after being in hospital for two to three days, she succumbed to her injuries. And at that time, we didn't have those childhood stories in our recollection. And then later that year, we all friends were just having a late night walk and talking about ghost stories, just joking around trying to scare each other. And P was all quiet and listening. And all of a sudden he says, do you remember I told you I used to see fire in my house? See how my mom died. Story 2. Same neighborhood. There is another friend of mine, T. T's dad was an alcoholic, and you can imagine all the sad things that alcoholism comes with existing in T's life. They were extremely poor, he is doing great now because he is super dedicated and very humble. And then his dad got diagnosed with tuberculosis. He was hospitalized and things were bad. Now in the apartment below T's apartment, there lives a family who has this mentally challenged man, in his late forties or early fifties. He's not married, family because here we have a culture of joint families, and he rarely steps out of the house. So, one morning around 5 a.m., while T's father was hospitalized, this old man knocked on T's door. T opened the door, and the man said, why aren't you ready yet? Go get ready and visit your dad for the last time. That was the day T's father died in the hospital. And he later told me about the incident. Both these stories are so convincing for me because I know these guys and I don't think they would lie about something related to losing their parents. I used to live in a house which was believed to be haunted. My parents experienced many paranormal activities. First, that house had a big lawn and there was a water sump at one of the corners. I was a toddler and as usual was playing in the lawn. My mother was inside and wanted to pick me up as it was late. She noticed that the sump lid was open and I was sitting near the edge of it, almost as if I were about to jump. She came sprinting, picked me up and later asked what I was doing. I replied, well Uncle Blair they niche, Chocolate Dean. Second, in the same house, we used to live at first floor. The owners, who were our relatives, used to live on the ground floor. There was only one landline phone with the relatives. My father used to live abroad and when he wanted to talk, would first dial and ask our relatives to call my mother. One night around 2 a.m., one of the relatives came, knocked on our door and said, Bobby, Biaka phone hi, niche I in. My mother was alarmed as my father never used to call during midnight. My mother figured that there's something wrong, neither responded nor went. The next morning my mother asked the lady about the call, she said there wasn't any phone call and neither had she come upstairs. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.